John 8, 20. Haec verba locutus est in gazo filacio, docens in templo, et nemo et prehendit eum, quia nec dum venerat hora eus. He said these words in the treasury while teaching in the temple, and no one seized him since his hour or time had not yet come. Well, clearly, we've got immediately to deal with this monstrosity here. And you might, I, I sort of imagine you reading this sentence for the first time, this verse, and saying, what on earth have I just slipped into some kind of uh, Italian horror film or something? Uh, no, you haven't. Greek is to blame, as so often with weirdness in Latin. So this is a representation of the Greek word gazo fulakion. And that just means literally the place where the treasure is guarded, <laughs> which is a fancy way of saying treasury, right? And the history of this word gets even weirder the deeper that you go. Originally, probably it's from a Persian root, but in Latin you will encounter gaza, which is a first declension noun as this loan word. Uh, not infrequently, particularly in poetry, you find it in the Aeneid. Um, you find it in all kinds of different places as a typical word for treasure, particularly because it has kind of an oriental exotic feel for the Romans. Uh, and we can understand why, given it's the history of the, the cultural exchanges that led to this word appearing in Latin in the first place. There are, of course, native Latin words for treasury. For instance, aerarium. The place where ice is kept, for instance, ice in Latin, not ice like uh, frozen water. And there's also fiscus, and also from Greek we've got tesaurus. It's not that there was any lack of ways to say this, but hey, if you can just basically transliterate the word in the Greek New Testament at the same place, why not? So let's go backwards a little bit, retrace our steps. Let's be sure to note locutus est is from the deponent verb, locur loqui. And so even though it looks passive, actually the meaning is active and it's the equivalent of dixit for Jesus here, Jesus dixit, haec verba. And this is where he spoke them. Uh, teaching in the temple at that time, docanes giving time contemporaneous with locutus est. And no one apprehended eum. No one seized him. And then we're going to get a clause giving the reason here. We just want to note probably apprehended is just the same as apprehended. Um, you might think, oh, well, if it had been written apprehended, I would have quickly figured out what it meant uh, a little bit sooner. But um, that's often how things were written in Latin is without the assimilation of the uh, the two consonants there, but the practice of the Romans varied at different times in different places and so forth. Nemo apprehendit eum. Nobody seized him. Why? Why didn't anybody seize him? One might wonder. Since or because his hora, his time or his hour had not yet come. And we want to note here, venerat is third person singular, pluperfect, active, indicative.